So what I'm going to do here is continue on from the point I reached in this video and exploit the hypertexture effects a little bit further. And we're going to start by looking at the top of the upper of the two infinite planes here, the one that provides the transparency layer. So I'm just going to the material lab. The metallicy effect, the overdriven metallicy, is suppressing reflection and the color response from the specularity through the diffuse channel color. If this is set to fully white, this is no longer effective. You can't see any of that happening, even if metallicy is turned up. However, if it's just slightly off fully white, even though you can't see the effect of it on uh, the transmission of light through the material, so you end up with a fully transparent, uh, clear section, you do get the effect from the metallicy. So I'll just turn that down a bit. So you can see that the metallicy effect is toning down the specular response, which I'm just going to turn up a little bit, so that it's reducing reflection and specular response as it gets closer to the camera. Let's try 25. You can see it's starting to cut in there and make it very dark, which is a bit extreme, so I'll go back to 20. Uh, but otherwise, it looks like a clear material, and I've still got this grazing angle reflection. So if I check out of this material now and consider the base layer, which is providing this uh, greeny blue light through from underneath, I, instead of generating that from a diffuse response, what I intend to do is change it to a reflection. I'll still provide some variation from texturing. So I'll just check above and see that these two uh, planes are more or less aligned, because what I want to do now that I've modified this surface material is provide some of the anisotropic effect through the base layer as well, so I can emphasize this reflection here. So I'll, with this selected, I'll select the plane underneath, go into the material lab and check out, and that will have transferred the material from this to this one. So I'll now just select this one, modify the material on this. It's not going to be transparent, it's going to be fully reflective. I don't want displacement in, it's not doing anything anyway. And I'm going to keep anisotropy. The frequency of this I'm going to vary so that it doesn't match the one above, but by not rotating the infinite plane, the anisotropic effect should remain in the same place. I'm not going to use this metallicy, this overdriven metallicy, to suppress the effect. What I'm going to do is turn the metallicy right up, switch its control to the alpha channel for this texture, and then set the diffuse to fully black. So that fully black will be brought in where this uh, texture is high, and so you'll get darker patches in the reflection. But the reflection will be picking up the sky colors, so you get the reflection showing the sky colors from underneath. And then we've got a specularity, which is probably a bit strong there, so I'll turn that down. Also adding on to the transparent layer, and that should create a sort of a different, perhaps more natural effect. Okay, so I'm not seeing the metallic response from that particularly yet. So maybe I've not got that set up right. So I've got reflection there, metallicity coming through from this um, effect. I can see it switching in, but for some reason it doesn't look very strong. I don't need refraction. Set that down. It's not uh, not really matter that much anyway. So let's see, where have we got with that? I think, possibly, what might help us here is a bit more bump. So that will also modify the effect of the specular response. All right, you can see now the, the bumps causing the pattern to change, as well as having the metallicy effect. Maybe I will have a bit of this metallicy control from this, but we'll, whoops, go back to 10 there. I'll try a low value here. 0.01, 0.02. You can see the, switch, the effect is getting switched in, 0.05. There it's become quite strong there, so that'll darken the reflected layer. Perhaps a bit too much, I don't know. I'll, I'll tone it down a bit. 0.02. Let's see how that looks. So a certain degree of patchiness provided from the metallicity and the bump effect there. I'm trying a different value and then the reflection picking up colors from the sky and from the background. And the two overlaid specular responses, it's got one on the surface and one underneath, uh, will will be providing this highlight here, which is what I was trying to control, because I want that to look nice and bright, but not too wide. I'm going to try turning that down a little bit further then. Let's see, let's try 25. See if I can get away with a bit less. 
is that the less I put in, the sharper it's going to look. But if it's not going to fully white, then it's, it's not convincing me that the sun is really bright. This is the problem. I suppose this could be overcome if I had a HDRI sun in the sky, but because I'm working with the standard Bryce sun, then its intensity when it's reflected is very low. This is why HDRI images provide such better reflections in your scenes. So that's, uh, you know, just emphasizes that benefit. But I wanted to do it with the standard Bryce sun and try and work with these material effects. So here, I'm just going to modify the metallicity up a bit. Let's try 20, uh, 23 and see if that just creates a bit more contrast between the background reflection there and the foreground here. So by turning the metallicity up, it's just uh, suppressing the reflections. So if I was to, I'll save this camera position, lift the camera up, point it down. I should find is that the reflection and specularity are fading away underneath the camera and that where they're pointing at the horizon they get into their strongest so that's to give the most naturalistic effect I can get from using this so that's not bad I think let's have a look um, I'd like to see a little bit more blue in that I suppose another option is it's a risky thing to do is start overdriving the reflection effect as well so you can have overdriven reflection and overdriven metallicity and you'll get higher contrast again so balancing these effects off against one another is th is the way to go for getting more contrast so you can see now that's got darker down there and I uh, should be getting uh, more reflection so I'll be getting more sky through that I don't know how far I could take this effect before it becomes a bit weird well that's not too bad it's got a quite a nice glow to it and we're getting fairly reflective there always a bit of a temptation with these and end up taking the effect a bit too far and, uh, and you have to start winding it back again like so so it's got really dark underneath there so I've gone too far so let's go 0 0.9 whoops 0 0.09 and take the reflection down to 5 let's see how that looks um, yeah I think I think I'll go with that so that's another way of remixing these effects with the hyper textures that's the end of the video and uh, I'll save this scene and then when we start actually I'd like that to be a little bit bluer um, reflection of 6 metallicity of 0 0.08 yeah yeah okay it's a little bit more extreme uh, perhaps too extreme you, you could spend a long time doing this obviously I am demonstrating how you could spend a long time messing with this effect Let's try halving that value just so you get it to your satisfaction. But there you go. That's half the fun. That's the end of the video then. Cheers now.